I'm so glad you're here. Uh, if we have not met before, I'm Noreen Savage. This is called Starting Out Bright. And the reason that we're here, I'll just tell you very briefly who I am. This, first of all, is nothing. I'm nobody official with Bright Line Eating. But Bright Line Eating has been very special to me. And it was two years ago, coming up in May 2019, that I happened to see my friend Lori post on Facebook saying that she had lost 67 pounds with a program called Bright Line Eating. And if wanted any information, did I say 67? I think it's 57, 57 pounds. And if wanted any information, just to go ahead and contact her. And so I just quickly went to Messenger and found out, to my dismay, <laughs> four bright lines, no sugar, no flour, three meals a day, and weighed in measured portions. And I say to my dismay because I thought there was absolutely, positively, no way that I could do that. I could see myself weighing and measuring food, but there was no way to give up sugar and flour. But I met with Lori, we talked about the program, she was obviously happy with it, and she thought I could do it. And when a couple months later, I decided to give it a try, and I have not looked back. I have not been perfect, but I have not looked back. And I told myself that if I made it one year doing Bright Line Eating, I would post on my own personal page well, that year came up, and just before then, I'm a Christian, and I felt God was telling me I could do more than that. Now it was the time of COVID and Zooms, and if I could just connect people, all these wonderful people that I have met online, if I could just connect those with those who are struggling, that somehow would give people hope. And Today is number 36 of those Zoom chats. So one thing that was really special about this particular one is that when someone contacts me and said, I would really love it if you had asked my friend to be a guest, I know that person is inspiring, inspiring before she even gets here or he. And so that's how this happened with Mercedes contacting me. And fortunately, Treva considered, and so we are here together meeting Treva Walsh, and she's got a birthday coming Saturday, so everybody, happy birthday to Treva, and Treva, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I told you a little bit, I told everybody a little bit about my story, and we've had a chance to chat on Zoom to work out all the mechanics of it and to make sure... <laughs> we show up at the right space and also to get to know each other a little bit before having this meeting. And I've been inspired by your story, but if we could maybe just start out with the stats, because what was really kind of fun with the slideshow, you were right in the corner of my desktop. And so as these pictures came up, it was like, whoa, I had the vantage point of seeing your picture as you are now with this whole cycle of other pictures. So you have a lot of uh, information there just with just the pictures. Where did you start and where are you now? Um, maybe weight wise or how long it took? Yeah, at my very highest, I was 280. And that was probably in the 1990s, I would say, that I reached that high point. And a lot of ups and downs, a lot of weight loss and weight gain again, again. And it was like a career. My right. career was losing weight. Yeah, I thought about today, how much, I mean, I can ask you this question, how much brain space did losing weight take for you? Oh. It was constant. Yeah. It was constant. Every yeah. day, same thing, whether you're on a diet or you're going on one, um, for me anyway. I never, ever thought that I would stay heavy. It right. was like I knew that I could lose weight. I knew I wasn't going to be satisfied. I wasn't going to be a 
content fat person. I wanted to lose weight and stay thin. And it was just, it just became, like I said, a life, a life goal, a career, you know, just looking for the next best magic thing. So, you know, right off the bat from the 90s to now, so we're talking about 30 years, right? Around there, as far as what you struggled with your weight? Probably so. And, and at different times, from my highest, I lost, I lost either 20 or 30, and then stayed there for a while. And then I lost down to 230 and stayed there until I found BLE. So it was like I hit these big plateaus, and I'm not even sure how I maintained that much of a weight loss Mm -hmm. at different times. And how long would you keep that off at a time? So when you'd hit a plateau? For me, I was, I, I literally could gain 20 pounds back by the next month. It just seemed like it anyway. And I mean, in my own mind, but I could struggle, struggle, struggle with this diet, just using every bit of willpower, and then boom, it's all back. Right. And probably during those years, I wasn't weighing a lot. So unless I had to get weighed at the doctor's office, I didn't want to see, I didn't want to know. Right. So, you know, if you, if you don't mind, um, we talked a little about, a little bit about uh, what brings you to the weight, weight, weight problems that we have. And I know that you wanted to share your story and, and even to, you even prepared something for that to be able to just speak it without having to recall all from memory. Um, If you want to do that now or um, later, we can do it either way. Now, this is fine. Um, When When you and I had talked and agreed that we would do this, and I thought, you know, I don't have all those dates, information in my mind. So I sat down and just started writing. I I wrote my history. I looked up some information from some medical records or, you know, past, past events or whatever. And by the time I started recording that, it kind of became my history. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I asked your permission to read this. I know that that had at least not the uh, events that I've attended that hasn't been done before. So I appreciate your letting me do that. Yeah. And I know, I know that you have a lot to say. So definitely, you know, I just honor that. Thank you. So this is a little bit about my weight history. I was raised on a farm with abundant availability to healthy foods, which meant our own butchered meats, fresh eggs, milk straight from the cows, homemade cheeses, garden-grown vegetables, and fruit from family orchards. All my immediate family members, mother, father, and eight children, were normal size, with no one being overweight, except for me. I was also different in another way. At a very young age, I was being sexually and physically abused. I soon found that food was my solace, my lifeline. I ate to take away the hurt, which was ever present. And I began to eat huge amounts of food in secret. My mother was totally puzzled by my excess weight. And finally, at about age 10, she hauled me off to our family doctor and asked him to figure it out. He gave me diet pills. Thus began my long and confusing journey with food and weight issues. The sexual abuse stopped after several years, but the physical abuse continued, and the weight gain continued. I graduated from high school weighing about 250 pounds. When I went went away to college, I began to exercise, and I started training with my roommates to run long distances which I found exhilarating. I did eat junk food like college kids do, but I also restricted calories to counter the unhealthy foods. When I met my husband during my last year of college, 
I had lost well over 100 pounds. We got married a year and a half later, and by then I was slender, weighing around 135 or 140 at five foot seven. Life was wonderful. I loved the way I looked and felt, but I had to constantly diet to maintain my weight. We had our first three children and I quickly returned to a normal weight after each of them. After our fourth child was born, I started having nightmares and flashbacks of my abuse, a not uncommon occurrence for survivors of abuse. I began suffering from depression and anxiety. My husband, a family medicine physician, had his own pressures with trying to build and maintain his solo medical practice but he tried to be a sounding board and offered help in whatever way he could. I insisted to him that I was okay, determined that I would get through this like I got through everything else in my life, by my own power. But this time, my own power was not sufficient. Finally, my husband declared that enough is enough and sent me off to get counseling. Thus began another journey of many counselors and many therapy sessions. Even though I began to come through the fog of depression and anxiety while sorting out my past, my weight was still climbing. In two years time, I gained well over 100 pounds. I felt sick and ugly and I knew I had to lose weight. I felt like my life literally depended on my losing weight. So every magazine article about a new diet and every weight loss ad called my name. Over the following years, I did lose weight, but I gained it all back, plus more. My all-time highest weight reached 280 pounds. Every time I tried something new or tried something again, I was convinced that this time I would finally succeed in losing the excess weight and keeping it off. Wow, Treva, there's my heart so much. You um, you are in recovery. I mean, I would think that you are in recovery from day one of getting some help, some counseling, not from the doctor of the child. I'm thinking that you probably didn't share that with that doctor otherwise oh. because that would have been oh. that would have been a big blow up and uh yeah it's um i hear you and i i really appreciate your sharing because i know that you know your traumatic time as a child doesn't stop at childhood and that there was a blog that I wrote, you know, I told you I, I, I wrote blogs and I've shared a few in the starting out bright and it came to me, you know, my name's Noreen, not really common. Your name's not real common either, but I would bet you would be amazed if there were four other Trevas in one room with you. And that's what happened to me one day. I was in my store and there were four other Noreens in the store. We were like all shocked looking at each other and it occurred to me as you were reading this that our, our trauma as a child or sometime in our life, whether it's divorce, disease, death of a loved one, really a tough abuse as you described, bullying, there are just so many things. They don't end right there. And unless that we get through somehow and maybe not get over it, but get through it um, with the help of others and God, I believe. Um, can we really heal? How important was that recovery to be able to, to be able to do something like bright line eating? I mean, do you think that you could have gone through um, and started something like this to have a sustainable weight loss without at least addressing some of those issues? I, I can't say for sure because the recovery came before I met, before I met Brightline Eating. 
before I was introduced to bright line eating. So with, you know, therapy and time, distance, mm -hmm. and lots of support from my wonderful husband, you know, I came through on the other side. I no longer have those peaks where I, where I just lose it and start all over again, mm -hmm. which did happen many times. And I'm, I'm now to the point where I can talk about it. it. It happened to me, but it's just part of my history. It's not consuming and it's not who I am at this point. You know, it, it's part of my history. It it's, doesn't define me anymore. It did for a long time. Right. And it also takes up brain space. But, oh, yes. You know, and as we talked um, at one point, I, re I read a book once by Joyce Meyer, and she described a, a, a sexual abuse situation with herself. And these are not the, the, the exact words, but in that book, it just like jumped off page. And it said, he took a piece of my life then. He doesn't get my future too. And that just resonated with me. How much time spent on, you know, I'm not saying that it's not valuable to yourself to acknowledge that you went through it you know, and again, in this trauma or something else, but how much time we give to past, you know, and to even like, um, you know, obviously not on the same level or anything, but I think about like even the small lapses that we have with food, you know, how much time do we spend beating ourselves up? Really? I mean, it, again, it's oh, not the sure. same level at all, but are we so used to beating ourselves up for other past things? Some of them our fault, some of them obviously other people's faults. Some of them we just happened to be there and saw something we shouldn't see. You know, there are so many traumatic things um, that uh, we is almost the luck of the draw, really of what can happen um and uh do we do we feel like that there's some perfect life as far as like the perfect plan that will never will never go off plan um, one of the things that my friend Lori told me who introduced me to bright line eating and i've said this a number of times she pro she made me promise that if i were to start the program to remember two things one if i should go off the plan. Get in the ditch. One, don't beat yourself up. And the second was, don't look back. You're not going that way. And I have really tried to remember that. I, I had, you know, I'll just be up front. Um, with the Easter weekend, I was like sailing pretty with uh, a beautiful day on Saturday. And then my son asked me, hey, mom, you want to help me pack the baskets? Hope there are no children. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, sure. And I knew in about, it was about 15 minutes. And that's what it says in the book too, about willpower. I was feeling it just deplete out of me, like more and more. And I should have just walked away, but I didn't. <laughs> I stayed there too long. And then after the NMF happened, first I added up the calories of it. And I'll tell you that in a second. I added up exactly how many calories I had off plan. They were 750. Not proud of it, but that's, that was, I just wanted to look at it logically because I knew I was going to pay for it on the scale the next day. And I did. The next day I was up a pound and a half. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? A pound and a half is 5,200 calories. I consumed 700. What did I say? 30 or 50? It was, it was like not even close. So I could either look at it and say, I'm a failure. I'm done with it. And, you know, um, 
just go back to my old ways or say, wait, that's not even the actual calories that I consume. Mm -hmm. And, you know, try to be a little bit more logical and just move forward. So, and that's obviously not, um, again, what you have to do in recovery for something so traumatic as you went through. But um, I appreciate that you could share that with us. I know that there's someone, m many people who have gone through things and appreciate one that you can step forward and get help, counseling, um, therapy. You can also be that support person like your husband was. What a loving thing, really, to not stand for you just, you know, you know, just having this terrible memory to work with. Right. Agreed. So getting to the diet part, you said that you, um, getting to the, okay, Selman Robbins saying for every carb you hold on to, 0.3 gram of water. Yes. It's like times four or something that, yes, that's why I get on the scale and I'm quadrupling everything that I ate. Okay, so you were talking about you lived for almost like your life depended on losing the weight. What were you doing from this stretch of time that you tried or, or was it just self diets? No. Um, in fact, I made a list because I've had this conversation with some other people. It's like, oh, what have you tried this? Oh, I did that. I remember that. So I actually made a list. And so this is my list of things I have tried in the past. Um, many, many years ago, my mother gave me a chewable appetite suppressant called AIDS, A-Y-D-S. I think I'm going to do a check mark because I did that. Too. I think I had one box. <laughs> uh, Richard Simmons deal a meal. Check. <laughs> both, both the food plan and the exercise videos. Uh, more diet pills. So I've done diet pills more than once. Weight Watchers at least three times. Optifast. Yes. The cookie diet, which is a real thing. It was physician prescribed and had some kind of appetite suppressant in the cookie. And it was, you know, pharmaceutical thing. But it's called the cookie diet. Uh, I've done well, programs. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> who For wouldn't want to do that? Purposes. <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't want to do that? Um, I've done programs based on scripture and prayer at least three times a program based on food combining, competitions that required money to compete with other people, guaranteeing a payoff if you met your goal. Diet bet. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't called that, oh, but no. yeah. Uh, a hospital monitored program with nutrition counseling and regular weight check-ins. Overeaters Anonymous two times. Oh. Physicians Weight Loss Center. Slim Fast, Herbal Life, My Fitness Pal, at least seven or eight diet books and workbooks for different weight loss programs, including those written by celebrities. And well, this is why I have two bookshelves. <laughs> um, I hired a personal trainer, which okay. actually was the most beneficial thing because it enabled me to take part in some rigorous tours to the Holy Land in Alaska. And I don't think I would have been able to do that if I hadn't gained some strength. But I was still... Oh, I thought you meant that the guy or gal went with you. Oh! That's so no. no. the tours. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, and a couple things I came close to doing, uh, a residential long-term weight loss program and bariatric surgery. But by the time I decided I was going to pursue bariatric surgery, I wasn't quite heavy enough. I actually would have had to gain a few pounds to qualify. Oh. And I thought, no, that doesn't sound right. You know, gaining weight to have weight loss surgery. So yeah. I didn't. 
Yeah. And I'm thankful now that yes. I didn't have the surgery because I have a really good friend who did have the surgery, gained all her weight back. And maybe you she's know, joining I'm, you now. No, not yet. Okay. Well, yeah. I know that you're inspiring others, but I got to tell you something as you're reading off the list, <laughs> because I didn't tell you this when we talked the other day, you know, I'm lucky. I don't know mm -hmm. if I mentioned that. I'm really lucky. Well, when Richard Simmons came to town, he was at the auditorium. <laughs> Who do you think jumped on stage with him? <laughs> it was me. I knew all about it. I knew about deal a meal, deal a meal, and uh, sweating to the oldies. Uh -huh. And I, I did that faithfully for a long time. Um, but... You know, I, I probably would have gone to Overeaters Anonymous, but I, then people would have known that I was fat. And somehow I just, didn't, I was in such denial, I just could not believe it. You know, I just really couldn't believe it. Um, like even with clothes and stuff that I fortunately had sisters who would drop off clothes as I was gaining weight and they would just appear because I was in such denial as I was on the way up. But that was, uh, yeah, we, we get into that. So what made you choose to go on? What gave you the willingness after all of that to go on Brightline Eating? Well, like I said before, I knew I would never give up on trying to get thin. I just knew it. So I had to keep trying. I was never content to stay heavy. And in... Um, October of 2017, I was on Facebook, and one of my dear friends, she was one of the, one of the three other people, there were four of us, in one of those scripture weight loss mm -hmm. programs, um, she liked a post by Susan Pierce Thompson, and, you know, it's like anything having to do with weight loss and diets, it was just like, I was just drawn like a magnet to it. Yeah. So I read the post and I ordered the Kindle version of Brightline Eating, signed up for the 14 day challenge. And I did no sugar and no flour pretty well for almost a year. And then in September of the following year, so September 2018, I decided I was going to have to be more serious than I was. So I bought the hard copy of the book and I joined the boot camp and I decided to embrace all four lines. So you went a year without you were practicing. Or I guess, what? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess I thought, you know, probably the most important things in my mind were the no sugar, no flour. And so, then did you lose much? Um, I, you know, I met, I told, I told you I was going to look up that to see how much I lost, but I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. Um, I did lose a little bit, but not much, not much. So I, I did that successfully, imperfectly, but successfully stayed on the program. I, you know, I didn't um, keep all my lines bright all the time. And then in the spring of 2020, we had just come back from Mexico and heard a little bit, but not too much about COVID while we were there and came back and it was like all things COVID. And I just kind of lost my enthusiasm for doing anything Diet wise, I'm, I'm not sure what happened, but you know, like there are a lot of other people who fall off or fell off during COVID. And I just completely went off the track. I went back to my old habits, stopping at my old places, mm. getting my favorite NMFs. And, you know, I just, I was completely off. And I did that for about two weeks before I found. My dear friend, Cindy Norsworthy, I have to give a shout out to Cindy, and I had joined one of her community Zooms, 
And she said at the time, you know, if anybody wants to talk to her privately, you know, just to PM her and she'd get in touch and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I talked with her and decided to sign up for some individual counseling because I knew what I was doing. I wasn't going to get back on track on my own. And I did gain about five pounds back in that two weeks. And one of my mantras became, I've come too far to just come this far. I knew I wasn't going to go back and gain all my weight back, but I had to do something to turn it around. And I have to say that Cindy was instrumental in getting me back on track. You know, she got me back to a structured program and, you know, reporting into her and gave me some good practical counseling. And I got back on track and continued and met my goal. Um, I say in October of 2020, I kind of tiptoed in in September, but was still up and down a few pounds. In October, I met my goal of, my goal was 145 to 150. Wow. And I met it and stayed there in October. So I count October as my, October 2020, as when I successfully met my goal. And now I'm consistently, um, last two days was 140 actually. So between 140 and 144. So I'm below my low end of my goal. That's just amazing to me. But it really speaks to, again, you, you did something about it. You know, you didn't stay where you were. And you knew you needed to do something. You know, the, what is the saying that Susan has said? You know, you can fall in the ditch, but the, the road is just two feet, two feet back. What is, what is holding you to take you back to that road, though, to that path? And, you know, you found Cindy, which she's amazing. And we, we've had an interview, too. Um, she's amazing. Um, and I would definitely suggest people ca- catch her Wednesday Zoom, yes. too. Yes. Um, and she does more than that. So on in the Starting Out Bright, um, she posts in there the events, which is great. So that's, an, you know, I think that also speaks to community, too. And you didn't stay stagnant in where you were. You were admitting to yourself, you know, how far you were isolating, it sounds like. And um, going back, the old tracks were coming back in the brain. Like oh, yeah. I know where all those places are. When you get off track, you just want to do it by yourself in secret again. It's the old right. doing it, eating in secret. Yeah. And sometimes, and, you know, to me, I think what is so, I don't know, for me, there is a lot of fear. And the people who put in like a cautionary tale in the Facebook groups, I mean, I owe them a debt of gratitude because when I read those, it's just like another jolt to my system. Like, there ain't, <laughs> you know, it can go the other way too. We, we know we're capable of that. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I, I think a little bit of healthy fear is a good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, for those of us who are afraid of going back to our former ways and gaining all the weight back, because there are some people who generously write their stories so the rest of us can read them and benefit from them. You know, it's just like, oh, I thought I could just try a bite of NMF. You know, I was, I did this, I planned it and I did it. I was under control. And, you know, and then they said before they knew it, not, not everybody, but you know, enough people so that it seems to be a pattern. You know, they got off and they had a hard time getting back on or they wrote in for help because they couldn't get back on. Right. You know, it also just occurs to me as you're saying that is the bravery of what you just did tonight of, you know, speaking your story and speaking your truth and not being held back by the isolation in your brain. I know for me, when I, I spoke a few weeks ago and said something bad happened as a child, And I didn't plan on doing that. But in the week leading up to that 
interview because my niece was interviewing me, not this last time, but the time before. And I had this in my spirit, like, oh, I don't know if I'd ever want to talk about that. But as soon as I did, it was like, it is out. It is over. I've now, you know, I'm not going to isolate on that. And if it can help one person know they're not alone in the struggle, to me, I feel that it's worth it. And I believe in your heart, that's how you felt too, obviously, or you wouldn't share that. And it's the same with the isolation in the food. You know, when we, if we go back into the food, the easy thing is to say, oh gosh, no one will know. It's, you know, it's my little secret. Well, that is fine. One thing that I've done, and my husband is, is really kind of strange because in all these years of gaining weight from going from, you know, we were high school sweethearts. I was 115 in high school and going all the way to 270. There was never, ever, ever a time that I'd say, oh, by the way, honey, I had two pieces of NMF. I mean, I would never say that or three or four. I would never say that. But once I started on this journey, something compelled me. Maybe it was the honesty in the community. Something compelled me to make the decision that if I was going to go off plan, I was going to tell them. Like, I, I just want to tell you that I had this. He's not judging me. He's really shocked that I'll say that. But I don't want to isolate anymore. I don't want to be pretending I'm, I'm looking for um, plastic bags in the cupboard when that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for saran wrap. You know, I'm <laughs> looking for something <laughs> else. And, and so getting out of that isolation it do, does you wonders, don't you think? Like, what's, what's behind door number three? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of already know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I really think that's really true. Another piece too is the the support. So what do you do for support? Do you have an accountability partner? Um no. <laughs> okay. Not not specifically one accountability not one partner. Person. Okay. Uh Mercedes, the lovely person who I'm Mercedes who gave you my name as part of a Marco Polo group that I belong to that came out of the unofficial Gideon Games. And there were five of us who stayed together in a Marco Polo group and were very supportive of each other, very trusting, very open. She's nodding. Um, we're getting closer all the time. I think we feel that we can tell each other just about anything and know that they're taking that in and holding us in their heart. So they're kind of my accountability people. Um, I also belong to, uh, well, I don't belong. I attend, I attend your meetings every Thursday night. Yay. And yay, I love it. And I attend Cindy's group meetings every Wednesday morning. And I had been attending her smaller group meetings um, on Monday mornings. So those are my main support. And I also belong to a number of Facebook groups. I find that joining and being active in a Facebook Facebook group is sort of like belonging to a mega church or a big parish where you have so many people that you can get lost. Mm -hmm. And I find that, that being on Facebook in BLE is sort of like that. So you almost have to belong to a smaller community if you want to be seen and heard and feel like you're known and that you can get to know people. So I think joining those smaller groups and getting to know some people is really very valuable. I think you're right on with that. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily putting in a plug for starting out bright, but I do want to share that in case there's somebody here that hasn't joined the group yet. What I am finding, and you're one of them, what I'm finding is many teacher leaders in the group. That's, that's my picture of each of the people 
And it can be something that they regularly post like uh, then and now pictures, or they may just have a tidbit, or they are the first to answer when somebody has a question. I happen to see the questions answered when you join the group. And when I set up the questions, I thought it was just going to be a simple yes, no, like have you started Bright Line Eating? Yes, no. And there were two other questions. I had no idea that I was going to be reading stories of pain where people have said, you know, this is my last hope. And I, I'm right back to where I was with all the brain and the numbers and everything. Like what you said earlier, like your life depended on it. That's how I felt too. And that keeps me going. Like if, if there's one person who can connect and, and be given hope, that, that is just a gift, truly a gift. Um, and, and it doesn't always take that much. I have to put in a plug too, even though like the unofficial Gideon games, I have heard that over and over. I found an accountability buddy. My, my friend Tandalin was also in my group. And then we ended up our official unofficial game right up to COVID. And we became accountability partners just one-on-one. -on -one, and that was tremendous. So what do you do when you're in the danger zone with the door number three? Do you reach out to the Marco Polo group or what, what do you specifically do? Not, I don't usually reach out. That should be my first line of defense. My first line of defense now is getting myself out of that situation and getting those thoughts out of my head. Because if I start entertaining those thoughts and start having a conversation with myself, should I, shouldn't I, you know, I could eat this and make it part of my meal or, you know, it hasn't been that long since I ate. I can just count it as whatever. Um, as soon as I start trying to figure things out on how I could do it, you know, it just, it becomes a, a lost cause. So I just have to get it out of my head and walk away. It becomes it Richard not. Simmons wheel wheel a deal or deal a wheel. <laughs> deal a wheel. <laughs> Seriously, all I gotta do is put the card over here and I'll be all set. I Except up at my, the end of the day, you don't have any cards, cards left. <laughs> By dinner time, you don't have any. <laughs> no more cards. So yeah, I think you know that's that's a biggie is just to get those out of my head. Um, I find that brushing my teeth and using mouthwash as soon as I finish eating helps tremendously mm. because for me, it's a whole ritual of flossing and brushing and whatever. So, you know, I don't want to do that again. So by the time I'm finished with dinner, I, I brush my teeth and floss and I have no desire to get my teeth dirty. So it sounds yeah. silly, but it works for me. Wow. Um, That's perfect. Yeah. It's, it's all those little tricks, but they're actually, it's, it's part of your nightly routine now. Right. And so you've maybe just upped it a little bit for the time. So did you ever have times that you had to just really push through, like getting to maintenance? Because, you know, you're saying it took a year to get to the boot camp. I mean, did you feel like the science was compelling enough to to stay on the program? I mean, what was it that, that you, you kept with it, but then you didn't really go full guns until you got into boot camp, it sounds like. And then maybe not even really till after the counseling with Cindy. Yeah, I think it was different things at different times. I, I knew once I read the book that this, like well, you've said it before too, you know, it's like, I'm going to get thin. You know, I knew this was going to work where nothing else had. Um, I, I knew that, you know, this was my final effort. It wasn't like I was going to start looking for something else magical. Right. You know, this, this was my, my not, not that I felt hopeless, not that I felt like, you know, I, I would ever give up, but I knew this would work for me. 
and it was explained thoroughly why it works. And I think another thing about Bright Line eating that I didn't experience with the other diets is that Bright Line eating explained to me why it was important, why it was beneficial to do what they told you needed to be done to be successful. All the other programs were, okay, here's what you do. No explanation of why it works or, you know, how, how your brain needs to change or anything else. And to be honest with you, coming from the history that I came from and having lost my power at different times in my life, I didn't want someone just telling me what to do. Mm. I wanted to be given the information and to make an informed decision on my own because this is what the science says works and, you wow. know, that this is, is how you can change your brain. That is very, very powerful what you just said for anybody who has wanted to claim their own power back, who doesn't have a voice. Don't tell me what to do. It's amazing we made it through all those diets, right? But with the science, there was at least an explanation. I totally agree. Right. Um, we do execute right. it in that, you know, we get to choose whatever. But even the premise of being automatic in things is to stay the same so that you're not deal doing deal a meal, you know, like, so all your cards aren't done by noon. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it's truly like, oh, no. <laughs> there goes all my grain. Is, is that a confession? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I got to ask you something. Time is going so fast. Um, there's a picture that you gave me of the dress. Yes, the dress. What happened with the dress? The dress because that was in the the dress that was in the slideshow. When I set my goal, well, I my goal was when I lost weight, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to reach a normal BMI. Okay. So I researched and found out what a normal BMI was for my height. And I wanted to fit into that dress that was in the picture. I had gotten that in 1985 and I wore it to two weddings and some special occasions and that family picture. And boy, did I feel good in that dress. Nice. You know, I just felt, I felt attractive and I felt slender. And so I don't know why, but I saved that dress. I guess I thought I'd wear it again. And then I started gaining weight and couldn't, right. but I kept the dress. I said, my goal is to get back into that dress. Wow. So when I reached my goal weight, I thought, oh, I've got to try on the dress. So I had my husband take a picture of me in the dress, but he had to use chip clips in the back to, because it was too big. <laughs> and he had to gather up the extra material and put some chip clips back there. To <laughs> oh, my gosh. To make it fit a little better. So how old are those children that were in that other picture? Your children. I mean, our children. Yeah. Um, they're adults now. Oh boy, right? put me on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, they're probably adults now. Oh, obviously. Yeah. 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 85. Wow. That is so awesome. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> you know what? That makes me think. I saved my wedding dress from 1975. So I'd have I to get down. I would have to get down to this number, and I haven't showed a soul this from oh, Lauren's say, little exercise. I would have oh, to get down to that. So, wow. Okay, now the whole world knows. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's lower than the BMI that I thought. I do want to ask you a couple more things, though. Um, with being up, up to 280, did you have any health issues at all? Because you seem like you're doing well now, if you did. I I did. I had um, increasing glucose levels, which is really significant because we have a strong history of diabetes mm. in our family. I had high cholesterol, uh, borderline high blood pressure, which was always higher when I went to the doctor's office, uh, white coat syndrome. 
because I was always afraid to get on the scale. So just right. thinking about getting on the scale made my blood pressure go up. So it was even worse then than it would have been. Uh, I had early signs of fatty liver disease. I had sleep apnea and I woke myself up snoring multiple times in the night or my husband would poke me. Um, and we have, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a, fa a, a strong family history of breast cancer. And of course, you know, being overweight, you increase your estrogens and increase your risk for breast cancer. And of course, increased risk for heart disease. So, wow. so have you wiped all of that clean or, um, or most of it? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. My cholesterol could come down a little bit. I'm high normal. So I'm still working on getting it down a little bit more comfortable range. Well, I, I can say from the sleep apnea and snoring, um, I was three weeks in and my husband said, you're not snoring as much anymore. And I'm thinking, does he mean like I've gone from the, the motorcycle version <laughs> to like just little putt, putt, Because <laughs> I know I still do. But, you know, and I have to actually be honest with myself because the other night I'm like, boy, my foot is swollen. Well, I've been eating leftover ham and mm -hmm. kielbasa all week. Mm -hmm. And the salt in that probably, and I'm still over 200 pounds. So reality check. Yeah, I have to, I have to get with the program, drink more water and everything else. So anyway, um, besides the good health, do you have other non-scale victories? Oh, um, yeah. And I actually jotted some down because you always ask about non-scale victories. So, yeah, better health, of course, is number one. I have more self-confidence. When my husband hugs me, he can actually wrap his arms around me and hook them on the other side. Wow. Which yeah. is really big. Um, I have a new rheumatologist, and she's never known me heavy. So my second appointment with her, we were discussing changing my medication. So she said, well, it's dependent upon your BMI, you know, what dose I can increase it to. She says, for skinny people like you, that's like, that's all I heard. I said, what? For skinny people like you? Wow. That was crazy. That was crazy. I hope you wrote that down somewhere <laughs> in a book. <laughs> um, traveling is huge. Mm fitting into airplane seats or sitting next to someone you're not related to when you're hanging over was horrible. Hanging so, over. Oh, <laughs> words. oh, it's horrible. Oh. So th that's, that's just so much easier to travel and fly. Um, shopping for clothes is easier. I don't like shopping. I never have, and I still don't, but it's easier when I have to go buy something. Mm -hmm. You know, just to pull something off the rack. Um, I can fit into any chair when I walk into a room. I don't have to look at chairs to see if they have arms or if they're going to squash my derriere or anything. <laughs> or how much distance between the chair and the cement. <laughs> how, and, how far is the fall? <laughs> and I'll, I'll give you one more, and this will be my last one. There's, there's, there's a huge list, but my last one's going to be... Um, my, our oldest son, who we hadn't seen during COVID, he came over to help my husband with the taxes and he walked in and says, mom, are you getting enough to eat? Really? Said no one ever to me, you know? Okay. I, I said, Write yes, that I'm one down too. I said, yes, I'm getting enough to eat. Are you sure you're getting enough to eat? Wow. Anyway, it was funny. But. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's all so good. Oh. And you know what, Treva? I cannot believe this, but we are already right closing in, and you know how we like to stay on time. Um, I, 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 have to, I have to ask you, because I know there's someone here or someone who will be watching this who is just hanging on by a thread, who maybe has that in their mind all the time. What would you say to them? 
I would say to them probably the message that I gave myself more times than I can count is that you don't have to be perfect to succeed at this program. You know, there are a lot of people who will say, and rightly so, it's easier to be 100% than it is to be 95 or 98 or whatever they use. And that is true. It is. But I don't think those of us who are not 100% or have a crystal vase, as they say, um, should worry about not being successful. Because... You know, if you stick with the program, if you're unstoppable, um, if you just do the next right thing, if you just persist and have the willingness to keep going, you can be successful. So don't give up. Don't worry about being perfect. If that's your only concern, if that's keeping you from starting, don't worry about being perfect. And get help if you need it. And get help. Get help. Whether a person, you know, individual help or come into the groups. There are so many people in this Bright Line Eating community who are so willing to give support, advice, help, information, you know, that everybody has the opportunity to take advantage of it. Absolutely. And Treva, I am so happy that we have gotten to know each other and for you, all of your efforts in the group. And obviously, um, as Mercedes says, you're a treasure in their group. I know you're a treasure in our community. So thank you so, so much for sharing you. your story. And we got some good information too. Um, I know we, we got to close up, but um, I just thank you again. You are beautiful um, inside and out. And, you know, I, all, of the, all of the things that brought you to this moment are a part of you. And now you've given voice to others who can say, I can do it too. She did it. She's doing it. And I can do it too. Oh, I'm, I'm one of those people that, and it sounds trite, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. Believe me. No <laughs> Believe resistance me. on your part at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought that I was practicing with three weeks before the scale. <laughs> you had about a year, so you had that over me. <laughs> I do. I do. But I think I still have my deal meal <laughs> all in the basement somewhere. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I am going to close up as... I do every week, and I just want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Again, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you, Mercedes, for sending that note to me to introduce Treva to me. And Treva, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And everybody, good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. I hope that you will stay and would you be interested in playing three question Thursday? Sure. Three sure. question Thursday. <laughs> you know what? I did not get a chance to ask you a question. And I, so this will be my question number one. What are okay. all those bowls? The bowls on the slideshow. You had breakfast and lunch. Oh, 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 oh. What are your favorite breakfast or lunch? Okay, my favorite breakfasts are eight ounces. Well, I won't tell you measurements because everybody can do their own measurements, but Greek yogurt, okay. blueberries, and fiber one cereal. So that was on one slide. Okay. And the other was oatmeal with cooked apples on top, on top and cinnamon. So we have the oatmeal for the grains, the cooked apples, and then the yogurt. I have yogurt almost every day for breakfast, no matter what else I combine with it. Do you just cook the apples in the microwave or in a pan, or how do you do it? I cook about six pounds at a time in a what? big pot. In a big pot. They cook down to nothing. So you peel them all? You put them in the I pan? I don't peel them. Oh, you don't? I don't peel okay. Them. I core them and chop them. 
and cook them in a big pot. And then I freeze them in individual little servings. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Let me think for a second. Okay. Question number two. Has the scale ever surprised you in any way? Yes. Usually the surprises are when I go down, not when I go up. Okay. And I have actually seen the number three on the scale twice. Like about three days ago, it was 139 point something instead of 140 something. Wow. So that's happened one other time. And then I have to say to myself, should I, re should I adjust my goal? And then I say to myself, you know, don't be greedy. You know, you know where you're healthy. You've, you've reached your goal. Your doctor's calling you skinny. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Your son doesn't think you're eating enough. <laughs> That's something. Okay, so this is kind of related then. So third question. Okay. Uh, you said you don't like to shop. So do you have any, um, have any, what did you do about when you got rid of your clothes? Like, because from 280 all the way down. So, so what and, about that? Yeah, I had to go out and buy things in increments. But uh, until I reached goal, I was determined that I wasn't going to pay retail for anything. Okay. So I went thrift store shopping a lot. Good and idea. Thrift store. Wow. Do you know what I think, though? I think that people who have tried to lose weight, they have really nice low size clothes in the thrift stores. You know, whereas a size 3X, I get my money's worth. <laughs> So I have seven sizes in my closet right now. Oh. I got to make a decision. <laughs> I can't do that. They, my, my mental chatter would be too much if I kept all those sizes. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I have a few things to wear if I gain 10 pounds or whatever. Yeah. It's, they, they've got to be out the door. Yes. Well, Treva, thank you so much. And thank you for playing three questions Thursday. <laughs> It's been a delight. So thanks again. And good night, everybody. Good night. Stay bright. Thanks, Noreen. <laughs>